invite you to join us. A pleasant good night to everyone. The psalmist says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord and to come before his presence with singing. And that's exactly what we're going to do tonight together with the spoken word. To our viewers who have joined us from near and far, regardless to the country you are from, a special welcome is extended to you. I know that there is a special blessing in store for us all tonight. So to one and to all, I say welcome, Christ, welcome. Good night to everyone. We're asking you, wherever you are join, joining us this afternoon, we're asking you to please bow your heads with us as we pray on the behalf of the service tonight. Our Father and our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy name. We give you thanks and praise for your love and your goodness towards us. We truly thank you for life spared. We thank you for the opportunity given us whereby we can be part of the service once more tonight, Lord. But we come asking you to have mercy upon us and to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask that you create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit at this time, Lord. Father, I lift up the service tonight to you, Lord. I present the one that will bring forth your word here tonight, our dear evangelist, our dear pastor, Pastor Gittens, Lord. I ask that you take charge and take control of him. I ask that you hide him behind the cross of Calvary. And as he speak your word here tonight, Lord, he will speak it with boldness, with clarity, and with conviction. And at the end, everyone that is viewing, wherever they are, would receive a blessing, Lord. I ask that you would be with everyone who is tuning here tonight with us, Lord. I pray that as your word go forth, Lord, the Holy Spirit would prepare the hearts to receive it, and it would touch the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. I ask that you would bring comfort to them in this trying time that we are living in, in this in this crisis that we are living in. Your word will bring some hope to someone, Lord. And I pray at the end, Father, of this service, someone will receive the salvation in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray once again that you continue to be with us and continue to bless us and take charge and take control of this service. We ask in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know? Brought to you by GBB Ministry. Today we'll be looking at basil. Basil is a flavorful, leafy green herb that originated in Asia and Africa. It is a member of the mint family and many different varieties exist. Popular as a food seasoning, this aromatic herb is also used in teas and supplements which may provide a range of health benefits. There are many different types of basil which differ in taste and smell. Sweet basil, the most commercially available basil, is used in Italian food, has a strong clove scent because of its high concentration of the chemical agent eugenol. Alternatively, lime and lemon basil have a strong citrus scent due to their high concentration of lemonin. Here are some health benefits. 1. Basil help fight cancer. 2. It reduces the effects of stress. It has anti-aging properties. 4. It reduces inflammation and swelling. 5. Basil are rich in antioxidants. 6. It is rich in antibacterial properties. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. pandemic. I want to let you know the anchor holds in Jesus. I 
light of the storm I had the vision And I had dreams I even held them in my hand But I never Family Online Crusade featuring Pastor Charles Gittens, an experience you cannot forget. Now, our nightly topics are as follows on Tuesday, 14th April. In which book can we find the cure for the virus? Wednesday, 15th April. Why pray we have the virus already? Thursday, 16th April. All we are on the virus day. I give up. And of course, Friday, 17th April, just follow the rules and avoid COVID-19. It starts 6 p.m. nightly on all our GBB ministry platforms on Facebook and of course, YouTube. Now, don't forget, Happy Family Online Crusade, featuring Pastor Charles Gittens, an experience you cannot forget. Up next, why pray you have the virus already? Tonight, we deal with the subject. Why pray? You have the virus already. That's our subject. Why pray? You have the virus already. Let us pray. Our God and Father, thanks for your goodness towards us. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to present the message of salvation once again. Please, Father, empower me, grant me wisdom and clarity 
and may the message be clear and simple so that even the children may understand and accept and be saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, why pray? You have the virus already. Actually, uh, there are many individuals who tested positive uh, with COVID-19 and recovered. So if you are a person who did the test, listen to me carefully, you did the test and it came up positive, uh, do not despair or give up and say that is the death sentence. No, that's not the way to look at it. Still, you must have hope because God still answers prayers. Remember that. Uh, whether it is COVID-19 or whatever disease or whatever situation you may find yourself in, don't give up. God still answers prayer. prayers. I know what I'm talking about uh, because I was stricken with illness also. And myself and many individuals over the world, around the world, prayed more than once. And God healed me. I am saying to you, whoever you are, whoever you are and whatever disease you have don't give up cry out call upon God what is prayer uh, prayer is talking to God as to a friend but let me add here uh, prayer must be seen uh, not as gimme 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 God no uh, prayer must be seen as a continuous conversation with God your sustainer and redeemer and the life giver. Let me say it again. Prayer must be seen as a continuous conversation with God. Uh, next, whose prayers will God not hear and not answer? Now, you may find, you may find me strange, but listen to this. I answer that by saying, let God decide. Yes, let God decide whose prayers he will not hear and whose prayers he will not answer. I don't want to decide that. Now, some individuals will turn to Psalm 66 and verse 18, which says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, listen to this. Uh, so, what would you say about a man who uh, is going to do some criminal act? and calls upon God, and through God's Holy Spirit, the man's heart is softened, and he changes his mind from doing that criminal act. So I am saying, listen to me, I am saying straight up to the point, if you are a believer, and you know that you have iniquity in your heart, well, you must go to God, confess it, and get rid, let him help you to get rid of it. Uh, like David of old said, create in me a clean heart, O God. But there's another category of persons. A person who doesn't understand religion and God and theology well. Now, that person may cry out to God while they are still sinning. And through God's Holy Spirit, they may be guided to change their ways. Uh, then, when is it not right to pray? I don't know. I don't know of any time when it's wrong to pray. So I say pray all the time. Uh, then the question may be asked, do we pray too little? The answer is yes, we pray too little. Human beings like to wait until they are between a rock and a hard place in a terrible situation. Then they want to remember to pray uh, to God. Remember, uh, listen, we pray too little. Prayer does not change a situation alone. It can change you. And remember, this one will hit you. Real mature Christians, uh, when they do not get what they ask God for, they do not walk away and give up on God and religion. Remember that. Real mature Christians, when they do not get what they ask God for, they do not give up in despair and turn their back on God. No. A mature Christian still maintains that relationship with God. Uh, then, uh, listen to this one. Is yes or no or wait 
the only way God answers prayers. I leave you to calculate that. But listen, uh, listen to this. Uh, we must understand that sometimes God doesn't answer the way we want him to answer. But we must be mature enough to know, as the Bible points out, if we as earthly parents know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more God, he knows. If a son asks his father a fish, uh, the father doesn't give him a stone or a serpent. So I am saying, the God who created us, he knows how to give good gifts to us. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 20. And I read in your hearing, 2 Kings chapter 20. It says from verse 1, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order. For thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, uh, remember how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore I, as I was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Uh, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day uh, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city, out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And I, as I said, take a lump of faith, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, uh, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, uh, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial. Ahaz. Good is the reading of the word of the Lord. Let us, let us go back to this story. Hezekiah is the king of Israel. And the background into this is that Sennacherib's army, the Assyrians, are about to overrun uh, Hezekiah and the Israelites. And there they are besieged in Jerusalem, and they are scared for their lives. Uh, to add to that, uh, Sennacherib's army, uh, they are mocking the children of Israel and sent a letter uh, showing Hezekiah how uh, very soon the Assyrians will destroy the Israelites. And then on top of that, listen to this, on top of that, Hezekiah is sick unto death. Uh, now, let me, let me help you to understand something about prayer. Uh, Hezekiah doesn't have one problem. He has two major problems. Uh, one, he has to lead God's people in the right direction. And he also has to deal with his illness, a sickness, a terminal disease that will take him to the grave. Uh, now, let's deal with the first one. Hezekiah, when he heard, when he got the letter, and he took it to the house of the Lord, and he prayed. This shows uh, that Hezekiah was not a man who was praying only uh, when, he, uh, when he personally is experiencing something, but he's praying on behalf of his nation. He's in the habit of conversing and communicating with God. Hezekiah understands that when there is a situation that he cannot deal with, he can take it to the Lord. 
Brethren, I say to you, uh, brothers and sisters, whoever you are listening, understand that prayer is not about gimme, gimme. A uh, prayer is about a continuous conversation with your God. Be in touch with God. By the way, God answered that first prayer. And in answering that first prayer that Hezekiah made to the Lord, uh, 185,000 soldiers uh, from Sennacherib's army were slain by an angel. So here we notice uh, that because God did something good uh, for Hezekiah and answered Hezekiah's first prayer, it gives Hezekiah uh, endurance and strengthens his faith and he now wants to pray to God again. So, when Isaiah said to him, set your house in order, God said, you will not live, you're going to die. Hezekiah, because he knew that God could do the impossible and God had done the impossible for him in the past. Hezekiah now got the strength and the faith to turn his face to the wall and to pray and cry out to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that the call to set your house in order, let me point the finger to myself also, uh, the call to set your house in order is a universal one. Uh, now, it is not only COVID-19 should cause us to understand that we should set our houses in order. Because outside of COVID-19, we must understand uh, very clearly uh, that life is frail. Uh, we must understand that today you're here, tomorrow you can be gone. You cannot count on tomorrow. So we ought to live our lives every day as if it were our last. Our relationship with our brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, our parents and children should be good so that if something happens, and you don't live to see tomorrow. You know that spiritually you have made it right with the Lord. Let's go down to the text. He turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. He said, I beseech you, O Lord, verse 3 of uh, 2 Kings chapter 20. O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so understand brethren that tears are a language that God understands and when you mix tears and prayers it is easy to catch God's attention but please be sincere now let me let me point out something uh, in in verse 3 Hezekiah said I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart what is that saying? Well, let me tell you. Uh, Hezekiah, uh, listen, the kings of Israel, uh, the common comment of their lives was, he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, but in the case of Hezekiah, he says, and Hezekiah doesn't lie in this prayer, Hezekiah was practicing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So it seems to me uh, that when a person is not regarding iniquity in their heart, and when a person is not practicing sin, uh, it seems to me, based on this passage, uh, that God is willing to hear their request and to answer in a positive way. It is not to say that we can command God to do things, uh, but we can cry out, and we can do so boldly, and with strength, and with vigor, and vitality, and dynamism, when we know that we are living uh, the way God wants us to live. Uh, so there it is, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, uh, prayed, and by the time the prophet Isaiah had gotten out to the outer court, uh, God said, go back, go back and tell my servant, tell him that I'm going to heal him, and on the third day, just as though he went before uh, to the house of the Lord uh, with a letter from Sennacherib, who was mocking him, God said, on the third day, you will get a chance uh, to go back to the same house of the Lord, uh, the place where my presence is. You'll get a chance to go back to the house of the Lord and to say thanks to me. Ladies and gentlemen, 
whenever you get ill, understand that your first line of contact must be God. That when you get ill, uh, depending on whatever you have, whatever disease, it may be cancer, it may be HIV AIDS, it may be COVID-19. Remember, the first line is not to despair, but cry out to God. Call upon God. Sometimes, sometimes you see death and desperation in the eyes of the medical people who are dealing with you. I am saying still cry out to God. One thing I know, I will tell you that no sickness is too difficult for God to heal. He is the one who had a walking drugstore at the hem of his garment. He is the one who threatened uh, to close down uh, the funeral home in Bethany. Uh, Jesus Christ is the one who said to the storm, shut up. That's what he said to the storm. Peace be still. He is the one who healed Naaman of a terminal disease and caused his flesh to come back as smooth as the skin of a baby. He is the one, even demon possession, he is the one who the demon possessed man at Gadara, at the Gadarenes. Uh, he caused this man to be so changed and to put on clothes that when the villagers saw him, they watched at him. And they were wondering if this is the same man. So when sickness or disease uh, comes upon you, uh, please remember perhaps you're grinding in your pain and you pivoted between a rock and a hard place. Still cry out and call upon Dr. Jesus uh, because he can bring you comfort and he has the ability to heal. It is not in every situation that God will heal. But I prefer to ask God to heal uh, than to suggest to myself negatively that God will not heal. Uh, the asking is for me to do. The asking is for you to do. And the healing is for God to decide. I'm not ashamed if God doesn't choose uh, to heal. No, I'm not ashamed. I will, uh, I will still pray and you must still pray. And asking God to do the healing. Uh, because the asking is for you to do. And the healing is for God to decide. Uh, so you do your part and let God decide uh, how he will do his part. Uh, so Hezekiah, in Hezekiah's story, uh, it could have been discouragement. Uh, there could have been depression, uh, and in your case, it could be discouragement, depression, uh, domestic or financial problem, uh, pestilence as we have, you know, uh, it could be disaster, hurricane, it could be lack of uh, a boyfriend, a girlfriend who has uh, deserted you, it can be problems in your marriage, I am saying, uh, take it to the Lord in prayer, take it to the Lord in prayer. Brethren, brothers and sisters, neighbors and friends. Apart from the healing, remember to set your house in order. That's the gist of the message. Set your house in order. Because you don't know if you will live or die. But when you set your house in order, you have hope in the resurrection. Some points to ponder as we close. God knows how to give good gifts to his children. Uh, we are God's children twice, twice, uh, by creation and by redemption. Uh, then don't doubt, don't doubt, don't doubt God. Ask him instead to strengthen your faith when you ask for uh, whatever. Uh, then pray is talking to God as to a friend. And prayer is an ongoing conversation we should have and encourage with God. We pray too little. Uh, then God knows what you want, yes. Uh, but you need to ask. Asking God uh, shows dependence. And that will cause you to give credit to God when he hears and answers. Uh, just as how people do not talk too often to a friend. And in this lockdown time, we're glad for, to talk to friends and for friends to call us and relatives. Uh, similarly, uh, you must not be uh, too weary. Or tired of talking to God. Listen to this. Even when you have sinned, still come to God. And the first thing you must do if you have sinned and you want to talk to God is cry out to God and call upon him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and give up on the wrong. And accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, 
prayer is not just a request. Thank you prayers. Uh, we must have thank you prayers alone. No request. Uh, you notice what Jesus said uh, to the one who came back. He said, were they not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? In other words, God loves when we say thanks. When discouraged, pray. When happy, pray. When successful, pray. When you're suffering, uh, pray. When you're ill, pray. Whatever is the situation, pray. Call upon God and he will hear and answer your prayer. May God bless you. Understand that the same God who had the power and has the power to heal Hezekiah and to say to the son in Joshua's day, stand still and to shut up uh, the, the heavens in Elijah's day. The same God has the power to deal with you. Don't be afraid to come to him. We are his children. God doesn't give preferential treatment. We are his children. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Remember him. Like as a father. Pity at his children. So the Lord pity at them that fear him. Oh God and Father of mankind. Thanks for an, uh, an opportunity again to Give the message of salvation. Father, somebody may be wondering if they are too sinful to come to you. Father, touch them. Touch their lives. Impress them with your Holy Spirit. And let them make that step towards you. And cry out to you. Calling upon you. Asking you to forgive them of whatever that sin is. And if it is that there is some disease that is racking the body, perhaps COVID-19 also, Father, I beg of you, please heal those persons, I pray. And when healing would have been accomplished, Lord, may the honor, glory, and praise go to you and you alone. In Jesus' name I thank you. Amen and amen. May God bless you.